All right, kids, we're going to memorize this verse of scripture and we're just going to stand up and we're going to say it 150 times until we get it down. Does that sound exciting to you? No. Once again, we're going to use the iPair method and help kids have a lot of fun memorizing scripture. And if you remember the iPair method, it's introduction, presentation, explanation, application, and repetition. But you know, before I get into that, I also want to take a little bit of time as to why, why should we teach memory verses? Well, you know, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's coming from God. God wants us to know his word. Um, also in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 6 and 7, it basically describes that we're to have it in every aspect of our life. So it's really important that we do know scripture. Um, also, one of the great ways, and we're going to learn this in one of the verses in our VBS this, this, this week, or this coming week for VBS, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, um, talks about being saved through grace. And we talk about that. So um, God's word tells us how to be saved. And so we can do that by memorizing scripture. Um, also, it's nice to know God's word because it does convict us and direct us in the ways that we should go and also shows us ways that we can have victory over sin. And so God's word is really important. And one of the best ways to do it is to, uh, to really get involved with it is to memorize it so that you don't always have to have the Bible with you. You can just pull up what God has put in your mind about all of this. So once again, we're going to start with the idea of an introduction. Once again, this introduction needs is designed to engage and to quickly get the attention of the kids. I've told you before, be creative with this. Um, it can be a fun way. It can be something really enjoyable, something that you relate from your life that would t get their attention into the story. Questions, there's a lot of things that you can use to get their attention. Leading them into what you want them to learn. So remember, when you're looking at the verse, what is it that you're wanting to teach them that day? Because you're going to tie that into your explanation and application as well. So you want to make sure you're looking at the whole picture when you do this. Um, and then last but not least, um, just make sure that it's something that's very easy and clear for you to introduce and then explain and apply to the life of the child as well. So introduction. And I'm going to be giving you a full example of this uh, in a demo here in just a little bit. So presentation. Now, with a song, it was really easy. You just presented the song. With, um, with a memory verse, we actually would like you to do a lot more than just what we do with the song. The first thing that you need to do is basically you need to establish God's word. And one of the things that we like to do is we like to say something like this. This is God's word. It's always true. And one of the reasons we know that is because God can never lie. That means that his word is always true so we can trust it. And so one of the things you want to do as you're talking about that is to establish the Bible as God's word and that it's always true. The next thing that you want to do is to actually have your Bible marked so that you can quickly open up to the passage that you want to read. Because once again, it only takes about three seconds to lose the attention of a child. And if you're taking 15, 20 seconds to find the verse, then you're going to lose them and you're going to have to start all over again to get their attention. And so one of the neats that's really cool about this is by having these tabs in your Bible, you can open up right to it and so that you can uh, read the verse. Because that's the next thing that you want to do is you want to show them that it's not what you're teaching them, it's what God's Word is teaching them. So establish God's Word and then read it right out of the Bible. You can turn to that particular passage right out of your Bible. The next thing that you want to do is you also want to teach them about how to um, find the reference and, and teach them where to find it and what the process with that. And so once again, even in my Bible, I have it marked right in the beginning, um, the table of contents, so that you can go in there and you show them that there's a table of contents. You tell them which book you're looking for, what the verse or what the chapter is and what the verse is. So you walk through and you actually teach them how to find that verse in the Bible, which is really, really important to do. And then each day, what's kind of interesting, the first day you can talk about um, the table of contents, but then maybe the next day you can talk a little bit about who the author was or something special about that book. So each day you can add just a little bit more information. So once again, you're helping to really establish God's word. And then once again, you want to read it from God's word, connecting it to the visual, okay? Because one of the things we have fun with the kids is when we open it up, and we read it out of here and then we ask them, okay, can you read that? And most of the kids are going to say, no, we can't read it. It's too small. So what we do is we have a visual that where we have taken time to um, blow the song up, so to speak. So it's much bigger so that you can see the words. But one of the things that we do that continues to establish God's word 
And to make sure that this is true, as we say, you know, we know this book is true because it's God's word, it's the Bible, but we don't know what is written on here is true. So what you do is you read it out of this book and have the kids verify that what's on this document or on the visual is the same. Now, just out of curiosity, do you think it would be good to read something out of the King James Version if your verse is in the English Standard Version? No, it wouldn't be, okay? So make sure that we use the English Standard Version for these verses, so make sure that you're using an ESV Bible uh, when you're reading the verse, because the kids will tell you if it doesn't match, okay? So make sure that you are um, reading it out of the ESV, and then once you've read it and the kids say this matches, now you can say, well, we can trust this, because what? It's found in God's Word, and so we know God's Word is true. So always do that and make sure that you are reading uh, from the right version when you do that. So the idea is, is that you, you introduce, get the, the kids excited about the verse, but then you actually verify that this is God's word and that God's word is always true and they can believe it and it has a huge impact on their lives. So then once again, with the explanation part of it, do you remember how many words or concepts we're looking at? Come on, tell me. Okay, it's two. That's right. Good job. Um, explain two words or concepts in there. Um, and we're going to just send this verse real quickly. It's like the Son of Man is just another name for Jesus. So that's just a quick way of being able to um, explain uh, a simple concept like that. And once again, we use the KISS method for this, keeping it short and what? <laughs> simple, that's right. Okay. All right, application. Now, once again, you're going to apply this verse to a lost child and a saved child, but it's going to tie into your explanation as well as your introduction. Okay, so you would say something like, um, if you have never believed and received Jesus as your Savior, then God wants you to see it this way. If you have believed and received Jesus as your Savior, then God wants you to apply this to your life in this way. So you're just breaking it down and applying this verse for a lost child and a saved child, and you're doing some great teaching with it as you go along. And the KISS method applies for this one too. Keep it short and simple. One of the reasons we keep emphasizing this is because a lot of times when people, this is their part of the VBS and they want to, they enjoy doing this. And so they have a tendency to sometimes to uh, embellish or to go a little longer and keep teaching. And the reality is, like I said before, you've got a Bible lesson already. You've got a missionary story. That's why these need to be short and concise so that kids don't get bored with all of the long teaching that's going on. Keep this very short and simple. Now, repetition. This is where memory verses get to be a lot of fun um, because we're going to hold this um, up and then we're going to teach them how we want to do this. Like in my introduction, I said, what, we're going to repeat it how many times? Like 150 times? That wouldn't be any fun at all. But one of the things that we do is we have very unique ways of repeating the verse. And I'm going to show you some of those a little later on. Uh, but one of the keys to it is reading it out of the Bible, and then going through and, and, and repeating it again. You want it to be repeated at least eight to ten times. We recommend ten times by the times you get done with it so that they actually will know the verse when you're all done. Um, and then what we do after we get done with those repetitions, and we'll teach you about that in just a little bit, uh, we want you to end by singing the memory verse song. So you'll notice in our in the VBS curriculum that we have a uh, song for the memory verse. And so once again, you teach them. That's just an extra way of teaching them uh, with that. And when you do the memory verse song, once again, you don't want to just say, now we're going to sing a song. You can say something like, you know what? Another great way to memorize scripture is through music. And now we have a song that we're going to sing that will help us learn uh, the verse and whatever the verse is. And so you can do that. And then once again, when you get into that memory verse song, just like you did with a song, it's always good to come up with and share a couple of the motions with them so that they can be active in that song. And it's okay to do the memory verse song a couple of times. The second time, just show them once again, a couple more motions so that they learn more and more of those motions with that. So that's the idea of uh, a memory verse. The, one of the big differences is that presentation where we truly are establishing God's word as being absolutely true, something that we can trust because it's God's word and God never lies. And so you want to make sure that you're establishing that and that you're helping them to learn where to find that verse and, and to be able to uh, be able to find verses on their own uh, in the future. So introduce it in a fun way. Have a lot of fun with that. Get the kids' attention. Present it. Establish God's word as true explain. Shortly, take time to explain a couple of items, whether it's a phrase or a word. Apply it to the lost child, to the saved child, and then go through the repetitions. And once again, just, you know, once again, practice it out loud so that you know what it is. Take the time to know this. 
It's not so much about the fact that you want it to be a perfect presentation, but what you're doing is you're trying to make sure that you're doing it in a way that really re helps those kids respond and want to learn that memory verse. That's why it's important to do that. Um, also, uh, with that is to practice, um, you know, put the tabs in your Bible. That's a really important thing ahead of time that will save you a lot of time when it comes to uh, finding different things um, with that part of it. And then begin to think about which repetition you're going to be using each day. Now, we will assign those repetitions for each day so that you can see which one it is and go through there. Uh, in my demonstration, when I do the demonstration of the memory verse, I will go through those and what they look like uh, briefly. All right. So once again, iPair. It's all about presentation. And these iPairs can be used for songs and especially memory verses so that we can help those kids memorize God's word so it can impact their lives.